Hello. Today is the birthday of my friend Rainbow Fine Art. I want to say happy birthday to you here, but I guess I already did that in person because I'm with her. This video <laughs> was a lot of planning. I saw a video about porcelain corsets and I will insert who posted it here or there or somewhere on the screen. But I loved the idea and I thought that would make a great corset for a ballerina. Because Rainbow Fine Art has a thing for ballerinas and ballet and everything around it. So I decided the birthday doll that she will get needs to be a ballerina in a porcelain corset. And I made a sketch. Oh, what a surprise. Can you see it? I hope you see it. Ah, no. It is a little bit bright, but I hope you still can see the sketch. So this was what I made and I sent this sketch to her because so far, I think most of my dolls met her taste, but one that I made did not. And now I slightly fear that the birthday doll I made for her is not exactly to her taste, but we will see. I sent her the sketch and she thought that it looked nice, maybe a bit uncomfortable for a ballerina, but uh, we are not here for comfort. You will see my making journey <laughs> now. And again, happy birthday to you, Kitsy. Let's start with making the corset. And because I did not record any audio, you have to deal with a voiceover me. So I took out my mannequin that I made out of a Barbie, um, <laughs> aluminum foil and a little piece of warbler. I wrapped the doll into aluminum foil and then heated up the warbler to form it around her. And because I really wanted everything to be visible, that sounds strange, doesn't matter, um, I really went in with first a pencil, then with my fingers, to have as many details of the body visible. Yeah. Still sounds strange, but I think you know what I mean. I wanted the breast area to be a bit more pronounced. Pronounced? You know. Um, so, yeah, that you really have two cups and not only one massive thing. <laughs> then I sketched out the design of the corset I wanted. Then I could remove the warbler from the doll body thing, <laughs> mannequin, um, and I decided to cut the corset into three parts, the breastplate and the two back pieces, because warbler might be bendable, but I want to add some epoxy clay on top and I don't think that that is very bendable. So I needed a way to yeah, have hinges, kind of. <laughs> Instead of hinges, I just used a bit of satin ribbon that I glued securely in place on both sides. When this was dry, I took out my hole puncher and punched some holes, because obviously we need to lace it up later and on that point I decided to use the epoxy clay and yeah, before I am not able to reach the areas where I wanted the holes later, I just made the holes now. And why did I need to talk about it uh, th this long? I don't know. I first just tried to stuff my molds with um, epoxy clay, but that looked far too chunky for the tiny corset. So I had to make all the swirls and swivels and things 
uh, by hand. <laughs> Which, in the end, looked quite nice, but it was slightly exhausting. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm such a poor thing. Um, it turned out really nice, but it was a lot of detail work. So if you feel too clumsy for that, look for a smaller mold. <laughs> it took quite some time. After the epoxy clay was cured, it was time to paint everything. I used three different shades of purple and a teeny tiny bit of white. And after I covered everything with two layers of this, I then needed to do two layers of silver for all the sculpted parts just to give them a little bit more depth and yeah, make them stand out a bit more. It was finicky. I had to touch up everything purple again, but doesn't matter. In the end, it looked quite nice. I was able to yeah, put the glaze on top to make it as shiny as freaking possible. <laughs> so that it really does get at least a little bit of this porcelain feel. I needed to bedazzle the whole thing. So I took out my rhinestones and mainly the bluish purplish ones and some smoky black ones or gray ones and placed them let's say as sparsely as possible but as much as i thought was needed i really do think this is something you have to do as you feel in the moment Instead of a simple varnish, I used a nail polish. It was a gel-like top coat, so you could let it dry normally and didn't need any UV lights or something like that. But it is still quite shiny and looks rather juicy. Two coats of that and yeah, the base was done. It was time for everything that dangles. <laughs> for the yeah, strappy, dangly, glittery bits on the sides, I took out nearly every purple-ish bead that I had laying around. On top of some silver ones and some clear ones and I went through my whole bead stash. stash. And, yeah, that was the result. To get the beads to attach to our corset, we obviously needed a thread. I just used a simple white synthetic th thread. Of course, a nylon thread, a thicker one, would have been more sturdy, but I suspect that this doll will not be played with that much. Um, yeah, so I put the beads on the thread and then put some, yeah, the thread through the hole in the <laughs> corset and then put on some more beads and some silver charms for good measure just to make everything feel whimsical and slightly over the top. <laughs> You may notice that in the original sketch, the tutu was, yeah, slightly teal at the bottom. This was supposed to represent a gradient, and I thought I could achieve this gradient by just painting on the tool with alcohol ink, alcohol markers. Yeah, that was a fail. <laughs> the only result was that the fabric became quite sticky. Da -da. With our corset looking quite nice, 
We now need the rest of the costume, which means we need a tutu. I made one according to a tutorial by uh, Nete W. This is basically a romantic tutu. And I stitched that together because I want to try two different ways of dyeing this. Because, as you see in the sketch, we have something more teal. And, yeah, this version will go into the dye little by little by little by little, sink down more and more and more and more and more and more, until it is fully dissolved for, I think, five minutes. <laughs> so that we just get a little bit of dye on the top and basically everything here to here it gets an ombre effect. But because in the sketch I have the version that is dark on the bottom and dark on the top, I now have this funny bundle, which is all the tool that I used for this bundled up together and layered in a way that this part gets in the dye bath first, gets the darkest because it will be in the dye bath for the full 40 minutes and this part getting into the dye bath for the shortest amount of time. Full disclaimer, I never dyed synthetic fibers before. I bought a dye online and I have no idea if it will work. The dye I caught a call uh, I bought is able 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 don't know. I already measured out five grams of it together with ten grams of salt. I hope that it is the right measurements. And basically, <laughs> these five grams I measured would be enough for 125 grams of fabric. These two are only 13 grams. So, I prepared some other fabrics to go in the dye bath just to try it out. We have some synthetic, we have more synthetic, we have some cotton, we have the bathrobe material, and yeah, we have a lot of stuff. Yeah, so that is the step we will go through now. It is the next day, and we have some results. We had this white cotton. The result is quite okay. I think that, um, we still have some white here in it is because I did not uh, spread it out enough and so that is my fault and this is just it's still a little bit wet then we had a thinner cotton which is more of a blouse fabric but is a rather thin one the result for that is this we have another cotton, but this time it is, um, yeah, towel-like material. I made the bath ropes for my dolls out of this. It is still very wet, so maybe a little bit darker than it would be normally. The, I don't know, curtain fabric that I tried to dye, which ended up let's say tinted there is a difference and it is visible but it is not that much of a difference then i tried to dye lace because yes the dye says there's no way you can dye stuff like that synthetics but in the end it was right <laughs> <laughs> it is also a teeny tiny bit tinted, but it is not that much. And now we come to the really interesting parts. <laughs> I had 
bought a bunch of tool and this was labeled labeled as tool also but i don't think that it is and it is very stretchy and it is made of polyamide as well but there was something happening not exactly the color we were looking for <laughs> and all of this <laughs> builds up to the reveal of the tutu and the fabric is polyamide also or the material so you might already have an idea where this is going If we want to make a ballet version of the swamp thing, the thing out of the swamp, however it is called in English, we definitely have the tutu for it. When we see the tutu next to the corset, and no. <laughs> the only thing I can do now, buying some more blue, the darker blue, and try to dye on top of this to get a color similar to this. <laughs> I am not sure if this will be a success. We have to see. <laughs> but this does not work for me at all. Otherwise, I have to make another white tutu out of the few bits of fabric I have left. Obviously, the result was terrible. <laughs> Lucky for me, I already had this tutu made and now I show, it, I show you how. I am going to stitch everything together with the sewing machine, but I will take you along the ride. Oh yes, and normally <clears throat> a tutu would have just a waistband and not this bodice kind of thing that goes up but because of the design i made we need something to attach the sleeves to and i will attach them with a ribbon from here so they will get diagonally over the bust come out here when you have the bodice on top later so they will be here somewhere and this won't be uh, able to be seen underneath that is why I designed it this way not accurate not a 100% real way a tutu would be made but we have to do stuff for our dolls so that it will work we have a bit of dirt down there. That was something I forgot, I nearly forgot. Now we need to stitch this together. Let's start with the dart. Ta-da! And then add the sides to it. <clears throat> so this is where we are now everything is stitched together and uh, once secured with a zigzag stitch first we need to hem the yeah <laughs> leg hole you know what I mean uh, because we have to close the crotch later and for that this has to be hemmed already, otherwise we are not going to... Or we won't be able to hem that anymore. Now, we need to close the back center seam. But not completely, of course. We just want to close it. That her behind isn't exposed. Poor dolly. With this out of the way, we now open this up, match uh, these up with each other, 
and we are going to close this one. Now we just hem everything. And now we need the tool and put layer after layer after layer on there. Let's try this on. I brought some ribbon with me, which I would like to use. Surprise, surprise. As a way to keep the sleeves more or less in place. My idea at the moment is, would be to place this here as more or less the center tip. Then this goes back and when the corset is on top we can slide them down to get the look we want which would work okay this now is the i would say halfway decent white version oh and if you notice that the corset changed It's because this is the first version, this was the second one. So, um, now, with the costume more or less done, we of course need a doll. And I wanted a made to move doll. I do like her, but I think I want to change her hair into something darker. That will be done off camera because otherwise I think I will get some time problems because I'm with my mom for the next two weeks. So, you will see her unboxed, cleaned and with new hair later. So, three layers of MSC later, this is where we are. I want to sketch out the face, and for that, what color will we use? We should use something fairly light. So, the idea I have is to give her slightly closed eyes. Halfway closed eyes, who? At least they are not completely torn open. Um, and I do think she will look disastrous until the moment we are gluing on her lashes. Because without them she will always look a little bit smug, I think. She isn't supposed to look like that. She is supposed to look very gentle and very nice and regal and yeah, like a fantasy queen. So the goal here is to have later a nicely blended, quite pretty girl. What a surprise. Isn't that always the goal? Yeah. I want her to look slightly down as if being concentrated. And I think a ballerina would have to concentrate. So I think that works. I think we are on our last round of repaint because I already like her quite much. Um, quite a lot. You know what I mean. So now in the last round, when I go in with the black, I'm going to close her eyes a little bit more. Because they are still quite open. Ready for some lashes. And I already boiled her feet <laughs> and bended them. So we already have a more ballerina-esque banana feet <laughs> foot. 
Picking up the lashes with clumsy sausage fingers is not very nice. First, I will put her stockings onto her. And I just made them. <clears throat> oh my. I just made them. They are not as great as I wish they would be, but at least she has some. Next step, the tutu. Yes, I stitched them up too high. Now we need to cut them open a bit. Otherwise she won't fit in. <laughs> So, then let's sew her into it. Here we have the tutu. Arms up, my dear. And here we have the corset. So this is where we are now at the moment. As mentioned, we still need the shoes and we have to make her bun and we have to cut the lashes. But at least we now have an idea how she might look in the end. And I do think we can be quite happy with how she turned out so far. The Ballet shoes need to be special. We have our pieces of warbler, some satin ribbon. I have no idea how this will work because I will take these shoes for the bottom sole and these shoes <laughs> will be covered with some aluminium foil then I will try to make the toe box and when all of this is done one or two of those and the toe boxes we need to cover the toe box with satin having something that goes around the back of the foot and on uh, the top uh, top of the foot and yeah it will be interesting I don't even think that I will be able to do that, but I will try. So, my only way of watching for uh, references was going on the internet and searching on Google. And it looked like most of the point shoes were cream colored while the tutus and the pantyhoses were very white. And yeah, let's say this was my way to deal with that. Maybe we should make this a bit shorter. That is why I decided to go with those more um, cream colored shoes but yeah that does not even show up this is the wrong color this is the right one yeah so I'm not sure if anything I said so far did make any sense so far but let's not think about that anymore. And the question is, does it stick enough to itself that this will stay like this? It's an attempt, it's an attempt. When I was done with the shoes, I really thought they looked quite nice. Now, looking at them again, they should have been a bit 
bigger because they look very disproportionate. But what can you do? At least she has halfway decent toe shoes. Toe shoes? Point shoes. Point shoes. <laughs> that it was time for the hair and the hair was a slight disaster so I did a second attempt off camera for this bun and then I took out some black tool and sewed it on top of it just to make sure the bun is as neat as possible yeah you might notice me being done with her at this moment. But there were still two accessories we needed. A necklace and a crown. So let's switch over to these. I made two test ones. This is the first one. Let me zoom you in a bit. First one. And this is the second one. As mentioned, these are test crowns, but I do think the pattern used on this one fits better what I want to do. This pattern, as I already mentioned, which is mainly some smaller beads with some bigger purplish ones and I do think I want to mix them again to make that a little bit less predictable so we have a little loop here where the beads can go on and then for this lovely pattern We are starting with three of these, one of these, one more of these, one small one in the center. This one is too large, but this will work. And then again through the first one then again three of these two of the bigger ones one small one one bigger one through the first big one and this we do for quite some time until we reach a length that we Deem good enough. And now you go there and we twist. Because we need some height. So let's do four beads this time through the single tiny one so now that this is centered we need one two three four five and six. Okay. This one is the center one. Back through these two. Come here. You stay there. And three more. One, two, and you who wanted to 
run away. And again, through the top tiny one for her necklace I'm just twisting the wire and leave a little bit there so because that is just a tiny accessory uh, then we have her hat piece that we need to place And that is why I didn't remove the thread already. Because I think I want to sew this on. You know, normally you think when you are nearing the end of a project, you should feel relief or something like that or happy. I am <laughs> mostly just stressed out. And looking forward to never see the project again. <laughs> it only takes some days until I look back at it and think, oh yeah, that was great. But in the moment I'm done, I am done. And with that, the work is done. We do have the finished ballerina. And now you will see some pictures of her. I hope you did enjoy the process and we will see us in another video. Until then.